Okay, uh, hello again, this is Sandy Moss with my closet that's full of all kinds of stuff. And I should explain a couple of things. One is that the person who's taking the pictures and producing and editing this thing is my grandson, Birch Moss. And uh, it's because of him that I'm doing this. And uh, in my own background, it's one of being in biology and marine biology and a whole bunch of stuff. But mostly for the past 15 years, I've sort of haunted auctions and flea markets and whatnot and find things that seem to me to be interesting and when that happens I'll buy them and find out about them. Try and pass some of that information on to you. And one thing that I've acquired in that kind of quest is this weird looking uh, tool. It's got a real rough heavy tropical wood handle and if you look at it closely, you can see that there's all sorts of, of tool marks on it. It's, it's all sort of been gouged by actually gouges or hatchets or axes of some kind to, to make this very odd looking handle, which has a, a thin end of it and sort of a big bulbous front. And the blade, which is iron, it's probably pretty old for iron, and it's been sort of hammered and maybe they mortised uh, with a drill or something a hole through the head of this tool and sort of pounded the, the, uh, the metal part into it. And what this is, is an axe. You know, it's, it's used for chopping, but the fact that it's a long, narrow axe like this uh, suggests that it's used for a particular kind of chopping. And what it is, it's, a, it's an axe which some very... Uh, What do I want to say? Um, native people, probably in the tropics somewhere, used for making dugout canoes. And this was done all over the world, and, and particularly uh, the warmer parts of the world where tropical vegetation grows and there's lots of water, and so people needed canoes to get around with. And they they did what were made what were called dugout canoes. Uh, and this meant finding a tree, you know, a big enough tree. Sometimes dugout canoes are made out of trees as long as 50 feet, uh, but most of them are on the order of you know, 10 to 15 feet long. And what happens is that they uh, begin by smoothing the outside of the tree and maybe trying to cut a, a flat area and then gradually working into the tree with tools like this, you know, chipping away at the, at the wood. and. Uh, Ultimately, they get to the point where they'll sometimes put build fires in the tree, and, and in the trunk now they'll they'll get that burning, and as it burns and produces ashes, they'll they'll chip this out with the ash with this uh, with this canoe axe we can call it, and ultimately form the inside of the canoe. Sometimes putting buttresses across the hollow space, but ultimately getting something they could put in the water, float, take paddles, and move away with it. So it's a, it's a pretty crude. Um, kind of boat, but it's effective when you have lots of trees and lots of water. And this is just a tool, you know, a primitive tool for making, helping to make uh, dugout canoes. I don't know where it came from. Uh, I, I don't, uh, I assume it's, it's tropical. It could be South American. It could be the Pacific Islands, particularly the larger islands, uh, the Philippines, New Guinea, Sumatra. Uh, it could be African. Uh, it, it could come from pretty near anywhere, but it's it's a, it's kind of an appealing thing because it has this nice rough yet very smooth surface. People have handled this for a long time. And it's not new. I would guess it's probably at least a hundred, maybe two hundred years old. So there's a canoe axe, something that uh, I don't see every day.